Hey everyone, landing phase is the most important part of the game, and it's the first step to climbing. If you want to climb consistently, you need to be winning lane at least 90% of your games. And I hear players make the excuse that they get counterpicked in low elo, so that's why they lose lane. Today I'm going to show you exactly why counterpicks do not matter. I'm going to be leaning against a Yone, who is a champion who actually doesn't have any counterpicks, because his laning is so insanely strong if he takes the right rune page. And I'm going to be on Lux, a champion with a pretty weak laning phase, who is countered hard by Yone. On top of this, Yone goes fleet with door and shield, so sustain will be crazy, and I really should have no way of winning the lane. In high elo, it would be impossible. So, the first step to winning any matchup is understanding what both champions should be doing and how the lane is supposed to go. Lux is a control mage, and Yone is an assassin bruiser hybrid because he has a lot of burst and sustain damage like a Yasuo or Irelia. As Lux, my only win condition is to poke him out of the lane. I don't win any all ins and can't one-shot him unless I'm really fed. So that's why Yone's Dorn Shield Fleet Footwork setup is so strong here. It's just so much sustain to counter my one win condition. I want to go with a standard range versus melee game plan though, meaning I want to slow push two or three waves in, harass Yone for any great TCS he goes for, then crash on the tower and go from there. So let's get into the game plan now to see what that looks like and how I win this terrible counter matchup. At the start of the lane, before minions even touch, I'm auto attacking one minion down. This is because if I don't, the first three melee minions will die at the same time and I will need to use my E to grab them. I don't want to use a single E on CS in this lane, I want to use it for poke only. This will also give me the push advantage so I can start my slow push. To slow push, you just need to get the push advantage like this, then last hit and let the wave do the work. As I do this, I notice Yone walking up to try and proc his fleet footwork to heal, so I try to hit him with E, but the move speed from his fleet lets him get out just in time. Then, you see this low health red minion? I know he's going for it, so look how I position. I stand in a spot where I can punish him when he goes for it, but I'm as far away from the blue range minions as possible so I don't get aggro from them. When he walks up, I hit him with an auto attack to punish. This seems small, but watch how much small poke damage will add up as his lane goes on. Now I'm focused on grabbing my last hits and keeping my distance a bit because Yone has his third Q ready. As soon as that's down, I grab the CS, then we're gonna pause here. Do you see how he only has two minions to protect him and I have five and he's walking up for this last hit? Then take note of how fast I'm gonna punish this. I notice right away he's overextending for a last hit that he should just give, unless my E is down. If my E is down, it's alright to just take an auto attack's worth of damage here. But since my E is up, I walk straight in, auto him, then use E and auto attack again to proc the passive, and then collect my last hit on this range minion. So this is a huge misplay from him, he just lost about 40% of his health for 1 CS. You guys in low elo let players get away with murder and grab CS without punishing all the time. You have to be able to see right away that they are being greedy and punish accordingly. But now the second wave is arriving, and you can see I have a 4 minion lead. So these 4 minions will stack up with the next 6 to create a 10 minion wave. Then I can clear it and crash all of these on the tower, and harass Yone every time he walks up. So take note of my positioning now. Look where I'm standing, see how it's very very similar to my positioning before when there was a low CS he might go for. I'm ready to punish if Yone decides to go for this. He should just give it up, but let's see what happens. As expected, he doesn't want to give up the CS even though my E is up, so I wait for him to walk up, use E in an auto again, and chunk him. Some of you might be wondering though, what should he do? Is his only option really just give up the CS? What he should be doing is faking going for a last hit if he knows my E is up. If he fakes it, then baits my E and dodges it. That gives him a window to grab CS unpunished while my E is down and it wastes my mana. But if he just gives it up, I still have my E to punish him for the other ones he might go for. But anyways, getting back to it, I collect the last hit and hit level 2. As soon as I do, I walk up like this to look for an angle to hit my Q and punish him for walking up, but because he had his third Q stack, I didn't think it would be worth the mana with such a low chance of hitting it, so I don't use it. Then he actually makes a big mistake here that I just barely couldn't punish because of where I was standing. He uses his third Q at me like this. So this locks him into animation, and if I was positioned down just a bit more, I could hit him with the Q here and he's dead. But because I was at a weird angle, I didn't feel like I could hit him and it goes unpunished. But now I'm going to finish grabbing these last hits, then the wave is going to crash on the tower. As it crashes, I look for some E poke onto the Yone when it looked like he was going to walk up here, so I throw it and run away, making sure I don't take tower damage. Now watch how I'm positioned. I'm standing just like I was before, ready to punish if he ever walks up to CS or even get into range of me. This is how you need to be punishing bad positioning from the melees. Even with all the sustain that he has, he's still this low already. It's just like that, the lane is over. And before we keep going, I know you guys might be thinking, what about wards? Well, when I crashed the second wave, junglers could only be level 2, so I was in no danger. If I went to ward, I would have lost a ton of time that I could have been using to harass on the tower. Also, because Yoni was so low, he wouldn't even be able to help with the gank, so it would just be a 1v1. I could just root and run away, or even maybe kill the jungler since it's a Nidalee, and she's easily outplayed by dodging the spear. Anyways, like I said, the lane is over. 
Yone is really low and should recall here. If he does, I recall as well and lets his wave push back to me. We know it will push back to me because the wave is even and is on his side of the lane. This is also called the even minion rule. He'll lose CS the entire time and I'll come back to lane to a huge wave. If he doesn't recall, I keep doing the same thing, slowly pushing and harassing. And weirdly, he doesn't recall. So when he walks over the CS, I punish him for being greedy and auto him to proc my passive mark and get him really low. Now, it seems really like he's going to recall. So I push this wave as fast as possible and the next one before taking a reset of my own. So even though he didn't die, he's still going to miss a ton of golden experience and I'm going to be way ahead. And once I'm done clearing the wave, my Hecarim is getting invaded by Nidalee in the jungle and he dies, but it's important to understand I cannot help him. I need to shove my wave and take my reset as that's way more important right now. I didn't want to reset in the brush and be stopped by Nidalee, so I reset here instead. When I get back to lane, the wave is pushing to me. This is where a lot of players mess up. I can't be so focused on Harass right now because he has such a big wave behind him. If he just stood still and I used all my abilities on him and auto attacked him to try to kill him, I will die to the wave before I can kill him even if he doesn't damage me. So the first thing I'm going to do is use an E on all these minions and Yone to thin the wave out, which just means to kill minions to make the wave smaller, and to poke him. Then I'm going to be constantly auto attacking to collect CS and continue thinning and then use another E. The wave is much smaller now, so I can actually start looking for Pope. So when he walks up, I auto him to proc my passive mark, then use Q through this minion at an angle to get around the cannon, and auto him again to proc the mark one more time, and one more auto for good measure. He tries to trade back using his E, but because I'm on my tower, he can't do much to me. But notice how after he did a little bit of damage, I'm using my potion right away. I should try to be 100% health as much as possible when I'm against a champion that wants to all in me. Anyways, I'm collecting my last hits on the tower, then look at the wave again. It's even but on my side this time, so it's going to slow push towards him. This is perfect for my game plan. I'm going to do the same thing as before, slow push and harass when he goes for last hits like this, but still make sure I'm grabbing my own CS. He has his third Q stacked here, and I'm standing just out of range of it. I'm standing at this distance because I want to be able to walk up and punish the moment he uses it, if he does. He shouldn't use it, as it puts him out of position, but he does, so I start walking at him looking to punish. It's low elo, so hitting skill shots like this is really hard for me, as I have no way of knowing what they are thinking, so I just close my eyes and throw it and miss. I didn't actually close my eyes, but you get the point. It's kind of just random. The important thing to take away from this is I was ready to punish if he used his Q wrong, and he did. If I land my Q, he would take a ton of damage for it. You want to be ready to punish in these situations. I collect some last hits again though, and the next wave arrives. I see Hecarim is doing the enemy raptors, so I'm pushing a bit faster this time so I can potentially get a kill in the enemy jungle if they come. I still punish Yoni for walking up like this though. The enemy support Lulu ends up chasing Hecarim, so I walk over to potentially get a kill, but Hecarim was a bit low, so I pinged it back off and don't help. I don't want to throw my lane just to help my jungler. The only reason I would move is to get a kill for myself. But the wave is crashed on the tower again, so I'm doing the same thing as before, punishing every time he walks up with autos and hit a really beautiful Q here. It was a perfect angle to grab him behind the minions, but I just barely missed the kill. Then the enemy jungler and support are ganking me from bot side, but Yone is walking up for last hit. So I flash to finish him with an auto, and his fleet footwork heals him just in time and barely saves him. That's just unlucky, but now I have to survive the gank. So, because of the angle they're ganking me from, I have to get creative. I use flash to try to get that kill, so I can't just flash away or flash over the wall. Lulu will cut me off in river, and slow me for Nidalee to catch up, so I have to run towards their blue. I'm going to queue Nidalee first, then run towards the blast cone. As I get to it, I know she's going to try and throw a spear when I'm standing on the blast cone, because I would be standing still, so I make sure to dodge that first. Then, I blast cone over into the brush, and I know Lulu is cutting me off in river, but Nidalee doesn't have any CC, or any damage left to kill me before I can teleport away, so I just use my teleport to mid-tower. The wave is pushing to me, so I can collect this huge wave before recalling. I'm already winning lane really hard, and he shouldn't have survived this long, but he got a bit lucky from the healing from his fleet footwork. But when I get back to lane, I just do the exact same thing, pushing and harassing him on the tower. And now that I have my ult, I throw one last E and finish him off to get the kill. Alright guys, so as you can see, even in some of the worst matchups, in low elo, you can abuse anyone with how many mistakes they make constantly. And if you can win lane every game, you will climb extremely fast. By the way, you should know where our guides come from. Our hyper improvement platform skill capped is the number one place to actually start improving at League of Legends. You can input your rank before signing up to see where we'll think you'll climb to. Then if you don't hit that rank while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. We offer this because our services really do work. And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay for it. Check us out right after this. So that's going to bring us to the end of this one. Hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.